do things as welfare friendly as we can. At Dalrillian in Glen Shee, Elizabeth and David Stewart are producers with an eye on quality throughout the production chain. Here in Highland Perthshire they farm 1,200 acres, running 800 ewes, mainly Texel. For the Stewarts, producing what the market wants is a clear priority. You're looking for a lovely, a good jigget. Um, if you're buying a chop, you look one for one that's going to give you a good meal from it, but not too much fat. If you're buying a piece of shoulder, you want a shoulder that's going to give you a meal, not that you're going to be thinking how few is this going to feed. And what sort of things do you do in the husbandry point of view to make sure that the meat is good? Um, we are careful with them before they go to the market. You're always keep making sure they're fit, healthy, feet all right, um, everything just that they need to have that gives you a good healthy lamb. So when you're bringing your lambs in and you're selecting the lambs that you're going to send off to the prime market, what sort of things are you looking for when you're assessing the lambs? David does all the drawing of the lambs, but he's looking for good loin, good jigget, a good shoulder. What about fat cover? Obviously you do need some fat, but not excess. A lot of your lambs come back to the two local Blair Gowrie butchers, so what sort of comments do they make to you as a producer? We've been able to go and see them in the butchers and we've had good feedback. Um, they give us the reports that the customer gives on the lamb. Obviously they tell us if the uh, customers come back twice asking for the same lamb again. And yes, we've had good feedback from them. What sort of particular things do they say? They've taken us into the children, let us see them. They're very pleased with the jigget. They're pleased with the shoulders on them. But more important for them, they're pleased with the value they are getting from the lamb because of the quantity of meat that they actually have to sell. What about the actual meat eating quality? What do the consumers say to the butchers about that? They're pleased with the value they get for it. They're pleased with the taste and just generally very good feedback. When you actually go into the butcher shop in Blair Gary and see your lamb at point of retail, what sort of lessons have you learned from doing that? It's good to see because you see the amount of or, or lack of fat that's on them. Um, it's nice to see them, the carcasses split because you see the eye muscle. And yes, it's, it's very nice to see and come back and think and you see the live ones when you come home and hope that they look the same as the carcasses that you've just seen. And what's the ultimate aim? It's got to be good to eat. It's got to be good value to the housewife. It's got to be good value to the butcher. It's got to do well for the farmer. Everybody's got to be happy. The implications of not producing what the market wants is underlined by a leading processor. By the time I take all this fat out, tidy it up, trim it up, it would become too expensive and there's just no way that we could afford to do that. Um, as you can see, the, the amount of waste that's in there, the amount of fat, the weight and everything, and even down all down here. By the time I tidy that, to make it a sellable product, it would be far too expensive. An R4H carcass. Uh, for confirmation, as you can see, there's not a lot of confirmation in the leg. It's pretty fat down the back, especially the tail. This is when you're when you're judging for a lamb, when it, before it goes away, if you feel a tail, and obviously there's a very thick tail there. And as you can see, the fat lines all the way down the back. And if you cut into this lamb, you'll see quite a, a, a depth of fat. You look inside here and look at the fat in there, and it's all waste. That's it's all going to come out before you can sell this to the consumer. So it's it's a lamb that's been kept for too long, and and made over fat. The next lamb here, obviously, you've got good confirmation, ideal confirmation. It's an E3L. As you can see, very full developed all the way down. The meat is, is shining through here, that's what you want to see. And, and you look inside again, and the fat level is, is just sufficient for, for this type of lamb. So a good sellable lamb, good quality, and ideal for the butcher shop. So how big a problem is fat to the processor? It's a major problem because at the end of the day, to make it to a sellable product for the consumer, you've got all that fat to trim and throw away. And anything you throw away is a cost, and you, know, you can't have that. Clearly, we don't want our lambs over fat, as this becomes a consumer issue. But equally, fat cover is important to prevent cold shortening, and as will be pointed out by a chef shortly, fat imparts flavour elements into the lamb for the enjoyment of the consumer. And as with cattle or pigs, sheep too can be subject to stress. Weaning stress contributes to low growth rate and therefore inferior meat eating quality. Separation from the ewe and the consequent loss of milk creates stress, as does handling in pens and worming. 
Sheep are also stressed by fear of new environments and not knowing where to get water. But one of the biggest stress factors of all for sheep is transport. Transport uh, can cause a whole range of stressors uh, to, to the animal. Firstly, if they're penned with unfamiliar in individuals, that can actually you know, cause stress responses. But you're, you're probably particularly alluding to, to the quality, if you like, of, of the driving. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is where, again, there needs to be you know, considerable attention. Uh, you can watch videos of animals in the back of sheep in the back of, of trucks and if the driver is not being particularly careful then you can just see how much movement is, is happening to these animals uh, because it's, it's quite a lot of energy just to keep your body in a sort of safe uh, position in amongst all these uh, unexpected movements. They've got no idea really what's happening to them. They, they live very much in the here and now. So all this is again very unexpected. They've got no training. Um, so starting gently and, and trying as much as possible not to go around corners too fast, uh, not to sp have to, to put the brakes on so the animals all shunt to the, the forward part of the, of the truck. All these are really important things that, that drivers need to be trained in. For lamb producers, the key messages on farm are avoid weaning checks by reducing stress and wean lambs back onto the pasture they were on before weaning. Consistent growth rate post weaning, aiming for a minimum of 75 grams a day. Feed diets should be adequate in protein to achieve good conformation without compromising fat class. Avoid slaughter immediately after a diet change. Finish on a planned system appropriate to the growth rate potential of the lamb. Careful selection of prime lambs. Minimize stress during transport. And the key messages in processing are electrical stimulation, hip bone suspension, considerate chilling, and aging all improve quality.